Hello there, folks. If there's one thing you can be darn sure you'll be doing a lot of when you move to a new country for study or work is introduce yourself. You'll basically introduce yourself to everyone you work with, study with, or live with. So it's good to be good at it. Now, as simple and easy introducing yourself may seem, some people, especially those who have to introduce themselves in a foreign language, for example, in this case, you in English, can still get it wrong. And it's not because introductions are difficult, but it's just that they could be perceived to be, especially if you have to be introducing yourself to someone that matters, you know, be it a prospective employer, a colleague, a roommate, a classmate, a teacher, etc. Why? Because ideally, you'd want to be liked by those people you're introducing yourself to. You'd want to be accepted by them because you may well know, and if you don't, you should, that it's human nature to make a judgment about someone or at least form an opinion about the people you first meet in less than 20 seconds. So now you can see why self-introductions are important. It's because they're usually all that happens in that 20 seconds. And so getting it right will pave the way for a potentially more positive conversation, interaction, or even relationship. A successful first impression is one that usually makes you look confident, comfortable with who you are, respectful, maybe humorous, but kind. Now, in this video, self-introductions are not just, hi, my name is Patrick, nice to meet you, but they also cover anything that could be asked or said in a first conversation with someone you've just met. Many of these are called icebreakers, and icebreakers aim to obviously, you guessed it, break the ice. In other words, to facilitate conversation. Icebreakers can vary from talking about the weather to asking the other person about their background, their hometown, their work, or anything to show that person that you're taking interest in them. Needless to say, questions are a big part of your initial conversation with anyone. They show the other person that you care, that you want to know more about them. We humans love to talk about ourselves and, and we love it more when we are listened to. You know, we may not open up right away and spill it all out, nor should we, to be honest with you, otherwise we may come across as a bit awkward. So the best self-introduction are, well, I think the best self-introduction and first conversation is a balanced exchange of information between two or more people. You don't get to ask all the questions, but nor do you want to hijack the conversation. It doesn't work that way. It's a two-way street, give and take. The best first conversations happen between two people who just know how to strike that balance. Now, while greetings are pretty straightforward in first conversations, Icebreakers can go different ways depending on the situation, setting, time, place, weather, etc. But as an international student, there are some questions you must be ready to answer. Let's go over some of those questions and talk about how to answer them or how not to answer them sometimes. Question one, where are you from? See, the biggest mistake you can make here is answer with just one word. Don't just name the country and go quiet. You know, someone asks you, where are you from? You say something like, Nepal, Kathmandu, have you been there before? Or do you know where that is? Etc. So you see, you're answering the question, but then ending your answer with a question, making it easy for the other person to carry on with the conversation. Question two, how long have you been here for? Once again, don't just answer with one or two words. You don't want to come across as a robot, so you could answer as follows. In fact, I've just got here, so I'm still trying to settle and learn how to get around. Got any tips for me? Note the question at the end. I can't tell you how important it is to train yourself to finish your answer with a question. Question three, what is your uni major? Remember the golden rule no one word answers. Stretch your answers out a little bit and wrap it up with a question. So in this case, you could say something like that. 
Back in Nepal, I studied business and management for four years. I graduated last year, and now I'm about to start my MBA at IMC. Very excited about that. How about you? Do you work or study? I hope you've got the idea. Question four, where do you stay in Sydney? If you're going to answer with one word like Bondi or Newtown or Parramatta, you may as well be telling the other person to piss off <laughs> or, or as Aussie say it, rack off mate. In other words, you're signaling to the other person that you have no interest in conversing with them. Do we want that? Well, I mean, sometimes we might, but not when we're trying to have a meaningful interaction with someone, right? So back to that question, uh, where do you stay in Sydney? How do you answer that? Well, what I'd like to hear is something like, um, at the moment, I'm living in Parramatta. It's a 40 minute train ride. Um, it's a nice busy place. I like it. What about you? Do you live around here? Always finish up with a question at the end. If you want to keep the conversation going. Question five, do you like Sydney? Now, there are different ways to ask that question. How's Sydney been treating you? Or having a good time in Sydney, etc. But the purpose of asking these questions is one and the same, which is to hear you talk about your experience in Sydney. Now look, I mean, you may not be in love with Sydney or whichever city you happen to be in, but I don't think it, it's, it's a good idea to criticize the city in your first conversation because you don't quite know how the other person feels about, about the city. So play it safe and say something like, um, you know what, I haven't had the chance to see much of it, believe it or not, but Sydney is a lovely place. Um, it's a lovely city. It's amazing how multicultural it is. Is it much different from the other Aussie states? So there you have it. In the next video, we'll be looking at more icebreakers in various situations. Thank you for watching this video and make sure you like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to click on the notification bell. You don't want to miss out on our future videos. Have a lovely day, folks.